All right. Welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle Bradburn. Tonight, your co-host is down and out, uh, so he won't be with us, but uh, we're going to push on because that's what we're all about. Uh, so uh, tonight, we have the head coach, Micah Hughes from Bethel Christian Academy in Marietta, Georgia, correct? Mount Bethel. Yeah. Mount Bethel Christian Mount Academy. Bethel. I apologize. Yeah. Yep. Oh, good. Um, good. I go right to the Bethel. And his offensive coordinator, uh, some of you may recognize the name, uh, Blake Sims. Was a uh, former standout at Alabama, now doing the good work at the high school level and doing a lot of great things with kids down there. So, coaches, welcome on. We appreciate having you. Thanks for coming on tonight. Yeah, thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. So, we're going to talk a little bit about your offense tonight. And I think anytime we talk about offense, defense, or whatever, we always start off with the philosophy. So, why don't you guys tell me a little bit about the philosophy behind the Mount Bethel Christian offense? Yeah, so really, honestly, we we have our philosophy as a whole, and this is just our program philosophy. So we kind of, I mean, it is uh, it's our offense, defense, special teams, and just our program in general is uh, people, process, and product. That's our we got call it P three. It's three P's, and I actually took this from uh, a coach and mentor of mine, a guy by the name of Jeremy Boskin, um, and uh, I never really understood it. And I, he he always say it, and I'm just like, okay, man, you know, whatever. And then <laughs> when I uh, took over as a head coach, I was like, man, he was really, he had something going there. And, um, and so the, the biggest thing I know when I first got here, the biggest thing that I wanted to do was every program that I've ever gone into as a new coach or, you know, with a new staff or anything like that, just as an assistant or as a coordinator or anything, it's how quickly can you implement your scheme? And when, 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 with this is a brand new program. So we're starting from ground zero. There was no foundation. There was no real base or anything like that. So when I, met with our coaches and started to put the staff together. I said, guys, look, the first thing I want to do, one, is I want to bring in good people um, to our program. And and that was, and we've been able to do that. Um, and I feel wholeheartedly about that. Then the second thing was, it was, I want to, instead of just trying to implement this scheme as quickly as we possibly can, I want to build these, spend this time building relationships with the players. And I know that sounds cliche and that's something, but it was, I had seen it firsthand at some other schools that we had played in the past and they had done that and built these relationships and they would beat us with honestly lesser, you know, lesser kids. And I I was like, how are you guys doing this? And it was just the relationships that they built with these kids and those kids would go to war for them. And I said, that's what I want to do when I come here, you know, and I want our staff to do is I want to build these deep relationships with our players. And then from there, you know, that's, we'll get the scheme in and, and it'll take care of itself. So, Honestly, just the philosophy behind what we do is is hiring good people, bringing good people around our program. We have a structured, very structured, very organized process to what we do. And then we always say the product, you know, on the field takes care of itself. So that's really, I don't know, Blake can talk probably more about the offensive philosophy, but that's the program philosophy for what we do. Yeah. And before we get into uh, Blake here, you know, it's a coach that was actually perfect. We filmed an episode two nights ago that'll come out a week before your episode. And it was all about culture. We had a uh, 30 year veteran um, who opened up and ran a pretty premier school here in North Florida, Bartram Trail. His name okay. is Daryl yeah. Sutherland. And he talked about culture two nights ago with us all night and everything he came back to was building relationships. So it's not cliche at all, coach. Yeah. It's what we do and it's who we are as coaches. And so for you to say that is actually perfect because if someone's listening to these episodes in a row, they had just heard 40 something minutes on that. And then you followed up. So it, it hammers at home, but uh, coach right. Sims, let's get back to you. Talk about the offensive philosophy. Uh, ours is really play, play a role, you know, play a role. I think every, Every uh, great offense, they know their role. If it's catching the ball, you catch the ball. If it's blocking, it's blocking. If it's if your offensive line and making the first step with your right foot to engage with the nose guard and break off to the linebacker, that's what you need to do. So we look at the small things. And other than that, man, we we don't hide anything. You know, we 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 come with our standard. We're gonna run the ball. We're gonna throw the ball. And hey, you see it? Stop it. If not. You know, we're gonna we're gonna run it run it down your throat every time, but we're gonna do it with class. We're gonna do it with class. And the way that you carry yourself on and off the field plays a big part in the offense. So you a lot of a lot of kids think, okay, if I go to practice and I work hard and I work hard and I work hard, I'm gonna play. But no, here here at Mount Bethel, we look at you off the field. How are you where are you sitting at in the classroom? Can we trust you? Can we trust you? Are you being a, uh, are you being somebody in the community where everybody's like, hey, I want my kid to be like that kid. 
you know, and uh, being a leader, being a leader. The thing about um, I love is I want all my teammates to know that I love the guys that act the same way when I'm watching them than when I'm not there. Because if you're oh, yeah. acting the same way, I know I can I can not just miss out, but I can not be there for that second and everything is being ran the same way. Yeah, right. They always say character is who you are when no one's looking. And that's a, a great example of that coach. And something we always talked about, I always told my kids, you know, if I if I walk into your classroom, I was a teacher on campus. And I said, you know, if I see you sitting in the back of the room, I'm not going to be happy. I, I never told them I was going to punish them. But I always, you know, I pull them aside. And say, why, why are you sitting in the back of the room? What's going on? You're like, yeah. you know, just by, uh, you know, if I went really teacher on everyone, just by stats alone, you're like 20% more likely to have a higher score in class just by sitting in the front. By sitting in the so front. I, I tell kids, I'm like, do the easy thing. Just sit in the front and you'll get a C instead of a D just like that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, with us being the second year program too, I'm just, especially with my quarterback, right? With my quarterback, I'm just telling him, we need you to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Because if you get comfortable with the uncomfortable, then when you walk in that that huddle and them 10 guys are looking at you, man, when you got your brothers behind you, man, it ain't nobody can stop you. Coach, I, I love that. And I'm not sure exactly where you got that from, but I've used it a lot. And I know where I got it from was the Navy <laughs> SEALs. So I, I love when anyone pushes that stuff. I'm a big reader of Navy SEAL books. Uh, that? People that know me know I, I mean, used to be a history teacher. I'm, I'm kind yeah. of a a buff on warfare and all that. So when I hear people say something like that, it immediately triggered. I'm like, oh, that's a Navy SEAL saying. I love it. So no, it was, I got it from uh, Coach TJ. He was our weight training coach at Alabama. Yeah. He, I, used to, I used to love, uh, he used to always go, who can I trust? Who would be in my foxhole? Who would be in my foxhole? So I used to say, hey, I got that six, baby. I got that <laughs> six. Yeah, I love it, right? There's – um. Such a, you know, we don't ever want to compare ourselves to military because obviously what they do is above and beyond. But oh, there's man. a lot of crossover for me in the discipline and the teaching and the and the technique and the, you know, all that stuff. So I read a lot of those books. When I hear that, it immediately triggered for me. So that's that's fantastic, Coach. Yeah. So let's transition and talking about how you guys practice. Um, you know, you know, go through. I, I, you guys are a smaller school, clearly. So go through how you practice, kind of how you carry that, and then we can get into how you practice situations and all that stuff. Yeah, so it's funny. I'm actually I'm, I'm going to do I'm speaking at a couple clinics this year on, you know, um, utilizing, you know, practice plans with with limited player numbers. Um, so I, so I've kind of that's one thing, you know, where um, you know, I'm a defensive guy, you know, by, by heart. But um, really, it, as becoming a head coach practice, the way we practice was was incredibly important. And um, I actually I spent the last season at a school called Boyd Buchanan in Chattanooga. And I worked for um, legendary coach Gary Rankin. Um, he'd won 17 state championships, uh, has won 17, actually played. He took Boyd uh, to a state championship this year, uh, and they, you know, um, just an in incredible run. And um, and so I, what I – spending that – even that year with him, I was the assistant head coach there and spending the time with him uh, and seeing how he practiced, it, it, there's – you know, I was like, there's no – I mean, it's unbelievable to see – and so uh, I took a lot of that type stuff and then have implemented that with other things that I've done at other places. Um, but uh, just from a practice standpoint, do you want, you want like the break? Yeah, why not? Everything. So <laughs> we'll start every day. Uh, special teams are incredibly important. You know, just, uh, I mean, I know a lot of times that gets kind of thrown by the wayside. So we, we spend our pre-practice time. Um, Tuesdays would be our heavy days. Wednesday would be our light days. So we would go eight minutes of, a, of our pre-practice um, with our special teams where we've got, you know, on one side of the field, we've got our snappers, uh, our punters punting to the returners kind of on the farther end, we'd have our, our, uh, kickoff guys or kickers, uh, kicking to our, our kick return guys. And then in the middle, we would have our holders, snappers and, um, and our field goal kickers kicking. And then our offensive and defensive line would kind of be working on some, you know, everyday drills or just going through different uh, blocking schemes and things like that. So Tuesdays, we'd spend about eight minutes doing that, going through that again, fast pace. Uh, Wednesdays, five minutes, because we would spend about a 20 minute period on Wednesdays, uh, 20 minute special teams period on Wednesdays. So um, and then certain days, depending on it, uh, we would we would kick right into maybe a two minute drill uh, just to kind of get the kids going. Yep. And then, I mean, some days we do it, some days we don't. So it kind of keeps them on their toes a little bit. Um, and then we move into a 10 minute offensive warm up where we would spend five minutes working on um, individual type stuff. You know, uh, quarterbacks, receivers doing pat and goes. Running back, working on um, working on blocks and uh, just different angles and things like that. With with that, 
And then we bring the quarterbacks down. And this is something I got from Coach Rankin is unbelievable when we started doing it. And it, it, a lot of people have done it. It just was something that – and we would get the quarterbacks and the running backs together. We would put, you know, five cones down, put two – maybe two lines, um, and we would just work the mirror drill, running our plays. Uh, and we would spend five minutes every single day with the quarterbacks, uh, the running backs. And we in court, we had uh, H-backs and sniffers a lot, so th- those guys. And we would just work mirror drill. So. One the mirror, one group would go, they'd run, you know, and then they'd go to the opposite side and run the play the opposite direction. So that was just another way to obviously get more reps. Uh, we switch over to our defensive period. So once we get into the defensive side, tackling is huge for me. Um, you know, everywhere I've been, the defensive coordinator, we've always either incor- incorporated a tackling circuit um, or we've done um, tackling within our groups every single day, whether we're in pads or not. Yeah. Um, and so, like, this year we did a tackling circuit. Um, where we would have three stations, uh, and every station would be specifically uh, designed for you know an open field, a block destruction, uh, you know hip tracking, um, or you know we would just work a form form tackling, uh, and we spend a lot of time doing that, especially in the summertime, uh, you know teaching how to properly tackle, and uh, so we know we're doing that thing the right way. But we would do again a ten minute defensive warm up. We would do kind of the the indie everyday drills. Uh, D line, you know, linebackers, and they'd all be working their indie, indie, and then we'd go into a five minute tackling period. Um, I eventually like to get that, just get that incorporated within our, um, you know, with each coach kind of doing their own yeah. uh, thing that's specific to their position. Um, and then we go into our special play. So I'm a big trick play guy. I like to, uh, I like to have the trick plays. Um, so I know we hit, we hit the flea flicker a couple times this year for some touchdowns. Um, we do the the kind of the swinging gate. That's our, yeah. you know, that's our, and we we actually run it. Um, uh, you know, I spent some time at, at, at the Baylor School in Chattanooga, and and that was our that was our two point conversion, and we converted almost every time. So the I took a lot of those plays from from Coach Phil Massey and Baylor and what they did, and um, so we do we do a but but I try to get in. You know, uh, we start the season. We'll have five trick plays. And we'll work those every single day, whether we run them or not. We're going to work them every single day. So we have a specialty period where it's just trick plays. Uh, the kids enjoy it. We spend five minutes doing that. We'll do it on air every <laughs> single day. Um, I love that, Coach. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And so, and then it gets the kids excited. And then you know, uh, again, whether we run it or not, it comes up at some point in time. So you know, it may yep. be to win a game, and that, that's what we've got to do. And we, we hadn't ran it all year, but that particular time, we need it. And we, we've done – we practice it every day. So, um, for us, with being small, uh, we, we have 25 – we had 25 players this year with this being our first year of high school football, which, again, to me and our coaches was great. We were excited about that. Um, was being a small private school and, again, not knowing uh, what we would have or wouldn't have. Um, so, we do a lot of half-line stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, so we'll do a half line inside period. Well, we'll you know we'll work five run plays to the right, five run plays to the left, um, and then in our in our inside period we'll put a gauntlet together. With, it might be some coaches with pads. It might be you know, but we're going to work you know making sure those running backs are keeping that ball secure, uh, having to run through the gauntlet once they get through uh, you know um, in our half line drill. So we'll do a half line inside period uh, again. Five plays one way, five plays the other. Um, and then we'll go into uh, uh, we'll do that for ten minutes, and then go into a defensive period, typically seven on seven. And sometimes we have to do half line seven on seven. Oh yeah. And one thing this was really neat. I got this from a, a clinic or a, a chalk talk a couple. I was more than a couple years ago, but uh, and I'm sure a lot of people do it. It's nothing new to probably most coaches. It was new to me. Is we'll card our seven on sevens to where each kid. You know, we'll number them, you know, if, uh, receiver one, receiver two, receiver three, four, and the number the back. And each kid will get a paper with the eight to ten plays on it. Yeah. So the guy who's running the scout team, all he's got to do is call out, hey, play six. And the kid looks at the, the looks at the paper and says, okay, hey, I'm receiver number one. He's running a corner. And he folds that up, puts it in his pants, and he's lined up and ready to go. So we're never huddling during our seven-on-sevens. We're able to just – the kid knows he's number one. The other kid knows he's number two, you know, and they – and then we've got to if – we, if we're able to have – for us, if we're able to have a backup behind that, we're able to utilize that. But it helps us to get that seven on seven. So instead of getting maybe 10 plays in a 10-minute period, we can get 15 or 20 because we're rapid fire and being able to roll. So um, – Yeah, that's huge, you know, Coach. Yeah, and it, it was great. I, I stole it from uh, 
a uh, guy named Ron Crawford. He was at, at Brentwood High School in Tennessee. He was speaking at a clinic and I heard him talking about it. And I was like, man, this is this is great. This is just something that's going to help us move faster and get this in and get more plays in. So, um, you know, we were able to do that. Uh, and again, sometimes it's sometimes we're able to do full field. Uh, sometimes it's, it's half line seven on sevens, but either way, we're able to go from there. And then we'll go back into an offensive uh, half line offensive period where we're running just perimeter plays. So we had our half line inside. Now this is perimeter, all our perimeter runs uh, or, you know, any kind of, you know, any kind of screen game or anything to the outside, the perimeter, we're able to get that in. So we'll again go try to get five plays to the right, five, five plays to the left there, you know, in our half line period. Um, and then we'll go into a, a defensive team period where, uh, and again, this is something I got from Boyd and, and um, the coaches there, but we would have, if we're able to do it, we would have two huddles um, where yeah. one huddle is running the play. Okay. And they're, they're having, they're getting the scout card and they're running the play. The other huddle is just for a formation. So, you know, that week we may be playing a team that, you know, may be, 90% spread, but they jump into a single wing. Yeah. So we're able to show that formation um, and, you know, get at least get lined up to it. Um, you know, or they may be, you know, a bunch of, you know, pro sets and they get into some kind of quads or they just get into some, maybe it's an exotic look. Yeah. We're able to run their normal stuff and actually run the play and, you know, um, you know, wrap up to that. And then we've got this other group that's coming in with just a formation. And yeah, that's not a terrible just, idea right there. No, it was great. It was great. And, we're, and, you know, again, and we're trying to get if we can get like, hey, let's get 15, 20 plays in with this group. And you, so you're getting I mean, you know, and as this group's getting their formation and coming off, the next group's already got the, the yeah. play. They're running on. And now you defensively, you've got to get your call in quick. And and again, it, it adds to that kind of rapid fire type, um, you know, type scenario there. And then again, you, you're able to get aligned to any kind of exotic thing they do or something they may not major in, but you're able to see it and kind of prepare for it. Um, we do. Then we go into our offensive team. Um, I know at Boy, we were able to go back. We were able to go two huddles back to back. Uh, we'd have one group running here, you know, from the, the 40 in one way and the 40 in the other way. And coaches were coaching, you know, we'd run one play here and turn around turn and around, yep. <laughs> coach them, do the same thing over there. So you're coaching, I mean, nonstop, both groups. Here, we're not able to do that, obviously, as much. So we do, we'll do as much live as we can. It may be half line, live team. And then we'll go into, uh, you know, just some plays on air to try to get that whole team concept. Um, and then, um, you know, we'll end with we'll end with some kind of, of conditioning. We do some exotic conditioning things. We do like a sideline to hash drill where we're doing, you know, stop blocking and everybody's got to incorporate into it. And or we do a perfect 90 type thing where yeah. you put the ball on the 10 and you gotta you gotta go and score with no mistakes. Uh so we try to we try to have fun with that. We do two minutes. Yeah, yeah, two yeah, two minutes. We, we, sometimes we'll end yeah. with two minutes. Um and do some different things like that. So we really try to get in and out as quickly as possible with our practices. I mean, I want 10 minute, five, 10 minute periods on everything. Um, and um, so we try to, you know, that's kind of how we try to do it. Uh, some days, you know, we're feeling good and we feel the flow on some things and I'll tell, you know, the coach, I say, Hey, keep doing this. We'll go another 10 minutes here. It, yeah. it feels good. Um, but that's kind of how we try to structure our practice, um, you know, to keep things organized and keep it rolling. No, I, I like some of those add-ins that you had there talking about running two huddles and doing different things. Um, I remember when we stumbled across, and again, I, I know other people have done this, so we stumbled across from another coach was you throw Skelly and you have in your O and D line, but it's just one-on-ones during Skelly. So it's one O lineman, one D lineman, and then we're throwing full field Skelly behind it. We used to, like the first time I came across this, I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Because now we get a real pass rush rep. Obviously, they can't hit the quarterback, but our right. guy gets to go, and it, it feels like football. Yeah. And it's amazing how early in my career, you know, when you're you're young, you just kind of do everything that you learn from your coach. Like we we all got to be realistic. Like that's what we do. Right. And right. then as you progress, I got to the point where at the end of my career, um, and hopefully it's not over. Maybe I'll go back. But I used to get with all the coaches uh, prior to the year. And say, all right, we're going to go through every drill and how it applies to a game movement. And if it doesn't apply to a game movement, we're getting rid of it. So every year we reviewed all that stuff because we wanted to always be on the cutting edge, but always be something that involved the game. And you'd find that drills you've done for three or four years, you're like, I don't like this anymore. Let's get rid of it. Let's let's move on to something else. Let's go learn. So I think that was a a cool process. 
So let's get into kind of situational stuff. So your offense, obviously, you guys, I've heard you talk about a little bit. Sounds like some 20 personnel stuff, um, you know, spread ish. I don't even know what to call it now. It's what kind of spread wing T sometimes when you're in 20 personnel or, you know, spread gap scheme or this or that. So talk a little bit about your offense and then talk a little bit about the situational stuff that you do to work with your offense in practice. Well, um, well, well, our situation the way we handle our situation within practice. And I think uh, Michael does another great job. He breaks it down by the day. Yeah. So like every day the kids know, and when we have meetings, you know, I think meetings are, is a, a very big important of uh, of kids learning and also reps. Cause you got some kids are visual learners and you got some kids are hands-on and you got oh, yeah. some kids that just need multiple reps. So it become muscle memory. Right. So, uh, Situation just the other day, like Mondays is, I think like before we get on the field, we do corrections of what we messed up from last game. So when they see it and they see it again, they know exactly what they're supposed to do. And then Tuesday is pretty much like first down, second down, what we'll get in certain situation and pretty much just let my quarterback know because I think my communication between my quarterback plays a lot. Like I would love for my quarterback to call the play before I'll call it. If it's second and third and it's in fourth quarter and it's three minutes left and we're up, then I need you to know that, like, okay, I need you to be in the huddle. Like, all right, guys, coming up soon, we're going to start letting the clock run a little bit or we're going to start, like, running the ball because we have four-minute offense, right? Yeah. And um, so just just reps and reps. And with us, uh, we're kind of – we're, we're, we're spread, but we also pro style. Yeah. We're, kinda, we're still pro style. Because uh, the the type of talent that we have, right? Being an offensive coordinator, you got to know what type of talent that you have because you can't – if you don't have no fast guys, you can't be running no jet sweeps, uh, RPOs, and stuff like that. Um, so we kind of pro style. You know, like I said, I love the run game. Uh, I was raising the run game. Uh, mentioning Coach Saban again, that's all he said. We're going to run the ball. <laughs> they don't know we're going to run the ball, and we're going to run it. So uh, a lot of 12 personnel – a lot of 13. And then we also do a lot of uh a lot of um empty, empty uh formations. And uh sometimes we'll bring a, a skilled player, more more of a runner and can run better routes than a running back. We'll put we'll bring him in for our running back as well. Um we got a near and a far formation where we bring a full back in and he will also run routes like a flat or make blocks and to where because the way our office is uh designed. We always leave in, not always, but majority of the time, we're leaving one player for the running back. And we're telling him, like, hey, you just got to make him miss. Yeah. And um, and then, like I said, we're trying to develop each player that comes through our program to where when they leave us, we know and we're very confident that they're ready for the next level. And in the next level, that's what you have to do. For you to get the big money and be first round, you have to make at least one guy miss. And my and our phrase in our running back room is that one person should never bring you down. Yeah, no doubt. Never bring you down, and we don't run out of bounds. <laughs> so I love that. <laughs> run up that sideline, and you see somebody coming, you step out of bounds, you won't see the field again. <laughs> you know. So, and uh, that's that's how we are. Uh, our run plays, we're very gap. We do gap when we uh, power plays. Um, we are outside zone. Because we we're very well, we're not as big, so we want to get the linemen moving, get yeah. them tired, and uh, play sideline to sideline. And um, that's pretty much it, man. We, we pro style a lot of put some over motions in this year. We're gonna put some over motions in, some jet motions. Uh, even though I, I'm mad that Michigan beat us, but you know they they had a lot of good plays that they did run. Boy, yeah. they were shifting everywhere all game long, man. So, you know, uh, I think the offensive coordinator did a great job playing against uh, Coach Saban and Coach Steele, and I think the way that he opened up was big. But yeah, my offense is uh, I kind of like I kind of joke about it and say I kind of took the same offense from Lane Kiffin because uh, I was very successful in that, and um, and I can teach and I can coach it very well, and um, it's just about. When it come to reads with our quarterbacks, is is one high, two high read. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want you sitting there thinking so much. But as we go and I see you progress, I'll start teaching you to where, hey, you see where the safety is. That lets you know right there that that go ain't gonna be there. Yeah. So instead of making that go your first read, that's make that that's make the dig your first read. 
and then we'll get back to the running back. We'll get to the running back even fast. And and I'll say one thing we did really well that I felt was we we play to the strengths of our kids. You know, and like when when like when when I hear when I came in, I told Blake, I sat down with Blake, I said, look, I said, a couple of things I want. I said, I want to be able to get into some spread sets. I want to be able to get under center. Uh, and knowing knowing his the Alabama background, I was like, I knew he can do, you know, I know that's <laughs> that's the worst. So, but I felt like this year we did a phenomenal job playing to the strengths of our kids. Um, and, you know, we would come in and, and there were times where it was like, hey, this is just this not working. We, you know, we've got to structure this and, and just and we had the answers to be able to move the pieces around. Um, and I think that was the biggest thing, um, you know, because really listening to him talk is, you know, we can get into a bunch of different things. We can do multiple different things, but it's each year. What do we have? What are the strengths of yeah. our kids? You know, is it a, a, a huge receiving core? Is it we have really good running backs this year? We've got some, uh, you know, a, a you know, a big line. You know, I hope we have those. You know, hope we have those things. But it's <laughs> it, it's what do we have this year, or you know, coming up in the future that we can utilize? And I think we, th- I know this year coming in with the little time we had, not having a full off season, quick summer, all that type stuff. You know, we were able to really utilize the, the strengths of our kids, and that's one thing that. You know, I always want to continue to do with within our offenses is, is to be able to do that. And so I think we did a good job of that. Yeah, no doubt. I think you touched on a really good point was moving kids around it and putting them in situations. You coach, I'm a defensive guy like you. So there's nothing I love more than if you're going to take your best player and put him in the same spot all game, boy, we can come up with some really good stuff for that. <laughs> but if all of a sudden he's on the outside, then he's in the slot, then you're putting him in the running back to run the rail route into the boundary and all this stuff. Now we're having to talk to our kids and say, all right, we got to check if he's here, check this if he's here, check that if he's here. And now with high school kids, you know how that goes. We'll make those checks right about 90% of the game. And boy, that 10%, we'll miss that check and that kid will go running by us. And you're like, we talked about it all week. So I I know that quite a bit in in kind of what we got back to. Like you said, once you start adding in motion um, shifts, all that good stuff, it it makes a big difference. When when offensive guys come to me and they're like, what do you not like seeing? Of course, I don't like seeing 12 personnel because it's the hardest thing to, to be multiple against. But I also don't like seeing a whole lot of motion and stuff like that, because then we really have to spend a lot of time that week repping motion. And so we play those motion and shift heavy intensive teams it takes away practice time. And we we're like you, coach. We we're a 90 minute practice team. We didn't like to be out there longer than that. We're like, look, we got 90 minutes, so we got to get it in. So if it's formation checks and moving and all that, that's what we have to do. So yeah. I love the idea of doing that stuff. Obviously, when you you go back and look at you guys and you talk about the Lane Kiffin stuff. I mean, he is even more so he's evolved into just a a monster when it comes to offensive football. We have guys, um, one of my good friends is OC here in town. And all he does is try to learn this stuff just from film. He's like, man, I went here. I talked to this guy. I got a quarter of that information. I got to go figure it out from this guy. And he pieces everything together. Um, He's on the vertical choice kind of hypo stuff now, but it's amazing to listen to guys try to piece things together. Um, he, his former player was a GA for Lane at, uh, FAU was a quarterback there in a GA. And so good. he's, I remember the when he was trying to piece together lane stuff. He's like, man, I got about 70% of it, but I have no idea what his protections are. This or that. And I kind of, well, the, the thing with lane, man, is that nobody would never understand <laughs> what lane does. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because like, I mean, I was in the meeting room room and my chair was right beside him in the meeting room. Yeah. And lane will come in literally and just be like, all right, we got to cover four this weekend, cover three, 20%, third down, blitz. And I'll be like, all right, Coach, what we got? He'll be like, just give me one minute. And he will sit there and go through a full clip of games, and he'll be like, all right, these are the plays we're running in practice. But we had already ran them. So yeah. he'll be like, but I see on third down that this kid loves to do this, and he'll make – and that's why he was able to sit there and do it. And a couple of things that I love about him – and that I love about our coaching staff too is that our words trigger pitchers. Yeah. You know, our words trigger pitchers. So if I say train right, all our our three by ones is about tease. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's all about tease. Then and then the, the I think what's <clears throat> best of it all is that we have coaches that would get out there and put their cleats on and show you how it's supposed to be. Yeah. So if you want to complain and say we're not doing it, well. But watch us. <laughs> you know? And then, I mean, it, it makes it, it helps us stay young and all that. No, and to piggyback off that, we were just before we before we were before we came on this, we were we were had a coaches meeting. Our O line coach was in here, and we were talking. And, and uh, I came in, and 
you know, and my, my role in the offense is I, I, I like, again, I like trick plays. So I come up with the special plays. Um, and then I, I do, I will, I liked our, we, we got into some single wing stuff this year. Um, we called it Big Bethel. And then I'm going to put in the Maryland Eye next year. I like that. But <laughs> we came in to meet and they, and Coach Sims and Coach Washington, our offensive line coach, had a bunch of stuff on the whiteboard and they were talking. And I said, guys, look, I said, I don't, I said, I don't want to know what you're talking about. I said, you know, I, I said, I trust you guys. I said, but I just need, I want you to put it on, you know, I want all it because it looks like, you know, all this madness going on. And I was like, just put it on pictures for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like hand, hand me this stuff in, in pictures. And so that's what we do with our kids. And I think that's, we try to relate everything, our calls, uh, when we, when we do any type of meetings or anything like that, I'm, I'm a big graphic guy. I'm a big picture guy. If we can relate something to, maybe it's a meme and maybe it's a, some kind of something that, that will resonate with them and they can understand it. You know, that to me is the best way to teach them. And so I know it is for me. And so we, we try to we try to hit all those kind of those sensory type things to help them better understand, because we have a ton of kids that have never played football before. Yeah. I mean, coming in this year, we had I mean, I think I want to say maybe four, three or four of our kids had ever played football. Wow. Um, and, and, and if there was maybe one or two that might have played maybe when they were really young. So, you know, this was foreign to them. So we had to come in and really kind of do do that with the pictures and with the words and the terminology we use to help them to understand exactly what we're doing. And I think offensively, you know, uh, Coach Sims and them did a phenomenal Yeah, because our personnel is named after marbles. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We got Hulk. We got when we go four wide out. I mean, we go five wide out. We call it flash. It's all yeah. flash guys, you know, where it's trigger pitches, man. And we're, we're, we're all guys that we, we don't see each other above each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like when you have a coaching staff that sees everybody equal and they just want to win, I think that's where it starts from. Yeah, a couple of things you guys talked about. First off, uh, Coach Hughes, the word you want to use is differentiation because that's your teaching word that you want to use, and that's what you guys are doing because yeah. um, that's a big trigger word for teachers. Uh, yeah. But, no, it's – you know, we make this argument all, all the time. Football coaches may be the best teachers in the in, in the country. And I, I do mean academically as well in the classroom, but the fact that we're able to get kids to absorb so much information so quickly and go out there and execute, it's wild. And how do we do that? By getting on that level. I, I was no different than you, Coach. We had, you know, like our creepers and simulator pressures were quarterbacks, right? And that's a common one. Hey, it's Breeze 2. It's, you know, Flacco 3. It's all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, our five man pressures um, were always dogs or something like that. And our six man pressures were states or something like that. But as we got down the line and we added it, I used to look at the kids back. Hey, what do you want to call this? Like, you know, the grouping, you guys pick out the call. And I knew what I wanted to call it, but I knew if they named it, they had a little more buy into it. Right. They, they have responsibility now. Hey, you named it. Right. You named this blitz Maine because it was up the middle and that's the state you came up with. Don't screw up Maine. You named it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I think that's such a great way to teach kids, but also give them that buying and that investment yeah. of, of all those different things. I, I love the Marvel thing. Uh, we've talked about it earlier on the podcast. I'm a huge nerd, too. So I love Marvel, Star Wars, all that stuff for, for yeah. Mr. Coach with the beard and everything. I'm, I'm a <laughs> dork. And so I, I appreciate it when coaches come up with references to that. Um, so talk a little bit about uh, we, we always talk about coaches and their kind of favorite things that they do. And then the best things they do. We had a, a former coach, not former coach. We had a coach on our second episode and he talked about analytics in the off season and breaking down his offense. And the big thing he came up with, he said, you know, we, we run all these plays and then we ran the analytics on it and true analytics. And he was like, we realized that 83% of our yards came off these 10 plays. So we better get real good at these 10 plays and then we can worry about everything else. So coach, why don't you talk a little bit about, you know, maybe your two or three, favorite runs and your two or three favorite passes because of how well you guys do them and the efficiency of that. Right. Um, I was saying that our two runs that we do very well and we did very well on last year was Storm and Boss. And Storm is just outside zone play. You know, uh, yep. we, got our, we got our running back taking his first step. His big toe is lined up with the, the, the last man on the line of scrimmage will be our tight end and sometimes our tackle. And you're reading the defense in. You're reading the defense in. If you see if you see the tight end's numbers, that means cut it up. If you don't see his numbers, that means you got outside. And boss was just an outside sweep. You know, I, I think sometimes we had some kids that was like, Coach, give me boss. 
and let me <laughs> let me lead, please. And um, that's what we do very well. Our guys did a great job of double teaming and breaking off to the to the uh, Mike linebacker or to the Will linebacker. We did a great job when we was team. When we was yeah. team, team. Anytime we would do man on man blocking schemes, we weren't very we weren't very successful and uh, pulling because we just didn't have the speed. Yeah, you know, uh, that was the only thing. But anytime that they'll put that right foot in the ground and just push them off the line, that was the part, that was the best time. Um, so real quick, uh, are you blocking boss the same way you're blocking storm? No, sir. So what we do, we do if we have a four down front, we have a four down front. We make our guard and our tackle come down and because we was pulling our center. Gotcha. Our center was our fastest lineman. So we'll make our guard and our tackle and we'll always run into the tight end. Gotcha. So we'll make everybody come down and the tackle's coming out, blocking it. Sometimes he'll block. If we run into the field, he'll get the Sam. And if we run into the boundary, he'll either get the wheel or the safety, depending, oh, on, yep. depending on if you got a cover three or a cover four or cover six. As some people call it cover eight. Yeah. Well, you you know what I call cover six. That's weak rotation cover three. That's a save and stable. We, we don't get into that very much. I have that argument every day with people. They're yeah. like six. I'm like weak rotation cover. Three. They're like no quarter quarter half. I'm like that's not yeah. six. Yeah, that's what I just. I mean, I, I love I love to call it cover eight. Like yeah. you, you know, whatever whatever. Folks <laughs> like, right? And um, like I said earlier, with our quarterback, man, I want him playing fast. I want him being confident because. I think the best quarterbacks come when they have their their confidence, right? Yeah. Because when you got your confidence, your your wide receivers know they can get to get from point A to point B as fast as they can because they know the ball will be there and the quarterback will take care of it, yeah. right? So we do a lot of one high, two high. Uh, my, one of my my favorite plays is uh, ace right jack uh, spin smash. So you got smash, you got six yard hitch with the inside guy running the ten yard corner. Yep. On the other side, you got uh, the ins- the slot guy running a six-yard hitch with a pause, 1,001 pause, and he's breaking out to the sideline. I love that route because sometimes that Will linebacker, yep. because he's on the backside, because I-, I feel like Will linebackers that's in the boundary, they're a run stopper. Yeah. They-, they don't really cover, right? So uh, right there, when you see him stop, you feel like you're already nervous. And then when you see the speed of our slot guy, you're going to be even that much nervous. And uh, when you see him stop, you think your job is done. Yeah. Then when he breaks out, he's wide open. Because the corner and the safety bites on the uh, dig route. Yeah. They bite on the dig route. So we go we go to the hitch, to the dig, back to the hitch, to our running back. And um, I just gave everybody a free play. So if you want to use it, you can use it. That's- Coach, we're only averaging about 50 listeners right now. So, you know, maybe if they go back, you know, maybe they're listening to this a couple of years from now. We're, we're big time. Yeah. 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 yeah, Go back and find, all right. He really likes this, but, uh, no, 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 I coach, I appreciate you sharing the X's and O's. It's something we want to get a little more into in this broadcast. We love hearing everything about coaches, but I I know at some point the demand's going to be for that. So no, I appreciate that quite a bit. And then my next play is, uh, like I said, we do, we do pro style, right? So you 12, you got a 12 personnel. Uh, we call it near right. You got it's pretty much trips to the right, but your fullback is in the B gap. You got your tight end uh, uh, attached to the line, and you got your Z far out. And what we like to do, we call we like to call uh, call it wave. Two posts with an over from your X. Your uh, your running back running a check. I call it check ball. Pretty yep. much a check down over the ball, and your fullback is protecting, and he's he's out to the flat. So pretty much we got two posts. And with a and like I said, uh, pitches trigger words, right? So if I wave, yeah, there's the post, and there's the yeah, drag coming back across. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love it so much because what's what's the main thing DBs don't want to happen? Because they know their coach is gonna cuss them out. They don't want to get beat deep, so they yeah. get on they get on that horse. <laughs> and, man, he could creep. He creeps the best way that he can. And um, I mean, DeAndre White used to do it the best. He used to do it the best, and Hunter. Uh, Hunter, the wide receiver from Clemson. I think Renfro. He did it. He did it great at Clemson too. You know, so I'll try to use that Clemson. The fact that uh Coach Saban, man, was willing to let me get all the games that yeah. I played in. I mm-hmm. can sit here instead of just talking about it and writing on the board, I can be like, hey, here goes Amari Cooper. You say you can't run that route, look how he did it. <laughs> you know? Or uh, running back Wesley, if we got Storm and he doesn't understand Storm, I'm like, well, you know, we got a four down front. Go watch this game. Go watch Dave Henry. Yeah. 
You know, so that's the, that's another positive thing. So I just I think because me as a when I was an athlete, I learned better when I was hands on when my coach was hands on with me. And um, I think that's just the main thing when it comes to any type of play. You can have the best plays, but if you don't have that connection and that understanding with your players. Nothing goes nothing goes very well. So I'm just a big believer in the way that my word choices, my body language and the way that I pour into these kids has a lot to do with the plays that I call and how they execute. Yeah, no, I I'm laughing when you said wave because I it again immediately triggers it for me. I have wave drawn up and I have the Bama version of wave in my folder. Yeah. Um, and then and then you're talking about you're like, oh, these games. I'm like, oh, I have that all 22 film. I know exactly what you're talking about. So. It's uh, we we have a shared drive among me and a handful of other coaches where we all dump all of our t- all 22 film into. Mm-hmm. And obviously me being me over the years, I have a bunch of Bama all 22. Um, yeah. So yeah. you're like wave. I'm like, oh, no, I've seen that. They yeah. definitely ran that quite a bit, uh, even yeah. as recently as um, uh, a couple of years back when they won the title uh, against Ohio State. They ran wave yeah. a couple of times in that yeah. game. So His last touchdown on that play. Yep. Yeah. So. I uh, immediately, you said wave. I'm like, oh, I know what's coming here. So, <laughs> oh, okay. oh, you, know. so uh, you guys talked about trick plays. And, uh, you know, look, you may have to change your signal for wave now. And I apologize for that. You know, you may have to go to something like this or whatever. Um, no, can you t- the whole student section. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Coach Hughes is going to be telling me in about a year. He's like, hey, I need you to take that episode down. All right. Like, just <laughs> let's, let's cut that off YouTube. <laughs> um, so talk a little bit about your, I, I love the fact that you have a trick play period every day that, yeah. um, coach Hughes, I'm a defensive coach too, but I am a, a more new school defensive coach who wants to score a bunch of points as well. Um, so I love the special teams period. So talk a little bit more about that period. Obviously your kids are having fun, but some of the stuff that you guys install, how you run it all that, again, you don't have to go into super yeah. detail and give me all your trick plays, but talk a little more about that. Cause I think that's a really cool thing that you guys do. It was fun. It's funny. Cause you, cause when I was at Boyd, Coach Rankin brought it in, um, and you know, and I mean, and Coach Rankin, he's he's again the winningest coach in the state of Tennessee, seventeen state championships. I think he's he's eighth or ninth. He, he's going to get to. He's at four eighty seven, four eighty eight yeah. wins right now. He'll get to five hundred probably next year. I mean, they they're loaded up. Yeah. With, <laughs> they were young this year and made it to the state championship game. So, um, so he'll get to five hundred. I think he's an eighth or ninth. You know, but when he came in, I, I really didn't know him. I knew him from Alcoa. He's one of the best people I've ever worked for. I mean, I'm talking, I'm not talking coaches. I'm talking people like yeah. he is a phenomenal human being. Um, and so I, I was thinking when he came in, I was like, okay, he's old school. You know, I mean, our offense was very old school. I mean, it was the, you know, you had a flanker and a split in, you've got, you know, numbering. <laughs> system, right. So I'm thinking, you know, this is like stuff I ran in high school and it's one of those, it's kind of the, that offense. You either stop it. You know, if you can stop it, great. If you can't, you can't. And, yeah. and now he's, he's incorporated a lot of motions and he does a lot of different things. Very creative. But he came in with all these trick plays. And I'm thinking, you know, old school, you know, he's an old school coach, and all, but he's got all this new school stuff. And it's, I mean, he's so innovative. So, and I completely just stole that from, from what he did um, and was like, you know, and I'd love the trick plays and had always tried to, um, you know, um, I don't say incorporate them. I was a defensive guy, but I'm like, man, I was always drawn to him. So when I got here, I think the, the first play of the first home game we had, and I stole it from Coach Rank. I mean, everybody's ran it, but it was just the old flea flicker. We got yeah. into, we got under center, pro I, handed the ball off to our running back. He turns around, pitches it, then turns around to block the middle, and we throw a touchdown. And I mean, they everybody just thought this is the coolest thing in the world. You know, our kids loved it, the the fans loved it, all that kind of stuff. And um, and so we just started incorporating. You know, we would just we would pick, um, you know, four or five plays. And so especially going into this year, we're going to have the four or five same trick plays. We're just going to work them every day. Yeah. Uh, so I remember Coach Rankin saying he had this one he had this one play called Game Winner. And he goes, <laughs> like, Mike, he said, I've literally ran that play. We ran it for five years straight and never ran it in a game. He said at practice oh, wow. every single day. He said we, they were playing Knox West double overtime to win the game. They ran that play and won the game and hit it, hit it perfectly. Oh, yeah. And five years of never running that play, and he goes, it happened, you know, in a double overtime to win the game. And so, you know, to me, that always resonated like, okay, you know, if we can practice these plays for five minutes every single day, whether we run them or not, you know, and so 
the, the flea flicker is always a big one for us. Um, we'll do I've, – I've incorporated the game winner play, um, and it's basically just an overload set where you leak a guy out across, quarterback yeah. rolls, throwback. Um, uh, boss, we we would get into some some single – I always call it single wing again, talking defense, being a defensive yeah. guy. They're, they're, I brought stuff that I hate to see. Um, and, I, I and hate the single wing coach. I was I in a league it. a couple of years ago in Chattanooga. We played in a in a, a league where we saw a ton. It was one year where we saw a ton of wing tee, and it was different wing tees. I mean, you yeah. would see the true like tight wing tee, and then we played one uh, that was it was a lot of jet motion, toss, Ugh. buck, a lot of just trying to get to the edge with some really good fast. Um, uh, running backs, and so we saw different versions of it. You know, you would see your, um, you know, the, and so I like scoured the earth trying to talk to every single coach in the world. Like, how do you, you know, <laughs> best way to defend this stuff? And a lot of guys you talk to go, coach, you know, I hadn't seen that in years. You know, I talked to some of these guys who coached at the, at the higher level, and they were like, coach, I hadn't seen that. You know, we don't we don't even see much tight end anymore. You know, it's just kind of. Um, so when I came here, I was like, I want some single wing type stuff. So we would utilize that from shifts. We would we would be in you know, maybe two by two and we would shift to it or yeah. we would get into that and shift out um, and different things like that. It was pretty much what you'd see. We had our double pass. Uh, we'd have a quarterback throwback, uh, the, the game winner, like I talked about, our flea flicker. Um, and then again, our rodeo stuff, we called it rodeo. That was our, our uh, swinging gate. You know, we put yeah. all of our, we would put all of our uh, offensive linemen out to one side and, uh, what I liked about that is I've got about five or six different plays out of it. So yeah. a lot of times we would, there was times we'd line that up in the middle of the field. Um, and coaches, what they're going to call timeout. So one, you get them, you get them burn a timeout. Yeah. We'd always change the play. I can remember we did this for a two point conversion where the, the other team called the timeout. We had one play drawn up. They lined up in something else. So we ran, we ran the other play. Yeah. But our, but our quarterback honestly could really call it based off of what he saw. Um, and so that this year was really kind of what we got into from a trick play standpoint. So if you came and watched it, we were going to run at least one or two trick plays every single game. Um, and, you know, that was what people were talking about. Man, all y'all do is run trick plays. And I'm like, not really. <laughs> I said, it looks like that. Or remember. Thing because, you know, one second we'd be in spread. Uh, and there was one game where, you know, we got into big – we call it Big Bethel. It was just, again, the single wing look where we'd go two tight ends. We'd bring our, our, uh, our uh, X and, and Z receiver – in at that kind of those sniffer positions and we put our running back a lot of times on the same side or opposite side and we could run counter off of that uh and um and then we would just really run our storm which is just our outside catch it and get you know outside run um then we'd have our throwback off of that but if you watched us you know we got there was a whole game where we got into the, the whole second half or the, no, it was the first half of the game we were in that because our other stuff wasn't really working very well and that yeah. was working for us so um you know, I felt too like we did a we did a really good job, you know, offensively of taking what the defense would give us. Where a lot of teams, I always felt would maybe outcoach yourselves trying to force things. Where it's like, okay, it's not working. Let's get into this, see if it works. It works. We're gonna keep doing it till you stop it. Um, yeah. So, but this year I plan to be much more, um, you know, strategic in our in our special. We're gonna have. I'm, I'm gonna start the season out with five um, special, you know, plays. I actually saw this. Twitter thing. I think it's prep reps or something like that, where it's Bigsby and it's all these other schools that do all, you know, it is Smith's fans. Oh yeah. I've seen that. But they do these trick plays. So I'm like, I'm, I'm on there a, a lot of nights just drawing stuff up thinking, hey, <laughs> this can we use that? So um, we're going to have five plays and we're going to keep them all season long. Um, and we're just going to run those uh, every day for that five minute period. So um, let the kids have a little fun and, and incorporate that into what we do. Yeah. I think that may be the uh, new school defensive coach thing because we would practice them, our offense, when I was a DC, and they ran this play called Dr. Pepper. It was dig it, pitch it. So they called it Dr. Pepper. And I've never seen it run in a game. And to this day, that particular OC, who's now at a different school, I text him every week. I'm like, first play of the game, Dr. Pepper, right? And every week he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to run it. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> still never run it yet, but I'm super excited. If he ever runs Dr. Pepper, I'm going to like lose it and post it on Twitter and everything. I don't care if it's a fumble. Because uh, right. it's kind of a hook and ladder. I don't care what happens. I'm like, Dr. Pepper, yeah. Yeah. And I'm also a big Dr. Pepper guy. So it's, you know, more of the same of things I love. But now I love the trick play stuff, coach. We ran it uh, when I was a head coach, very similar to you. I took over at a small Catholic school in St. Augustine, Florida. During COVID, we had 19 kids. Oh, God. Um, so we ran the swinging gate, right? It was just one through six. I'm just yelling out the number and here we go. 
and um, was was not a very successful year. I was one year head coach and then I was done. I I was like, I, this is not me. I want to be a DC. I don't want to be a head coach. This is not my style. But I was very much like that. I was like, here we go. This is we're going to run swing and gate and we're going to run trick plays here and there. and We're going to do anything we can uh, to kind of stay ahead. And you guys are probably in a lot better situation than I was. So <laughs> mine was just treading water for, for <laughs> 10 games. And and then, of course, they made every team make the playoffs that year. So we got matched up against a team that had a Nebraska commit running back. And I'm like, guys, we're one and nine. What are we doing in this game? What are we doing? <laughs> but Blake may, uh, Coach Sims may appreciate this. I, I went and grabbed the uh, the Belichick plan against the Rams in the Super Bowl. Uh, uh, that 6-1 front, we ran it. We actually held that kid to 30-something yards. But, of course, we threw three pick sixes in the first half. And that was yeah. <clears throat> um, so. You know, a couple other things, Coach, uh, you know, Coach Sims, if you don't mind, talk a little bit, um, just a little more about how you feel like your experience playing the game has really helped you translate that to to the kids and everything. Not not everybody has a, a career that went as long as yours. Uh, mine, mine definitely didn't. So talk a little bit about how that that worked out for you and how that's helpful uh, now as a coach. Oh, first, I'd like to say, man, first thing I did after I first practice, I called Coach Saban and I called Bruce Miller over at Lake Lanier, and I told him I apologize, man, for everything that I did as a player, not <laughs> listening, because I see what you're going through. I see what yeah. you went through, right? And um, I think that what what helped me a lot was just the preparation, man, and trusting the process. And um, I tell myself a lot, because I, 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 one day I want to be a head coach of a top NCAA school, and I tell myself, like, hey, when you started football, man, you wasn't, you wasn't in the professional. You wasn't a professional football player. You you started at rec ball and you made your way to middle school. You made your way to high school and you went to college and therefore and uh, just playing, man. It just lets you know what players go through and and you have to you have to understand that you got to accept it and understand that they go through things and know that you got a, a lot of different personalities. Yeah, oh a yeah, lot of different personalities and. Uh, and as a, and I think what helped me out a lot is that I was a quarterback, you know, like I knew how to interact with everybody. I made sure my line was good, uh, fed them very well. Um, and it, and it, it has it has helped me so much, man. I can't really put it in words, but, you know, when you know that feeling, you just know that football, like I, I'm glad for my career in football and I'm very blessed and highly favored of, of everything, but I'm ready to see where I can go with this coaching. and. And just give give back and serve the, the God, my God, the best way that I can, and try to be the best, and and just probably be a highlight of if I could touch one kid every year and be the highlight of his life, and be that one person that helped him out so much. I I love it. I love it because like at the end of this year, like Coach said, what we had player wise and everything. By the by, the time the last game, players was coming to me like, Coach, I see what you're seeing. I see yeah. why. Telling me on that out route of that that corner sitting right there, just stop. Don't keep going to him. And then, and so by hearing that, it, it made me feel good. Like, but you can do this. Blake, oh yeah, you can do this, man. So, <clears throat> and coach, that is the most rewarding part when you work with a kid on something and it just feels like they're never going to get it, and then they finally do it. Yeah. And you just lose your mind for them, even if it had yeah. nothing to do with the play. I can't tell you how many times I've been all over. Um, and excited for a DN when they spill a block correctly. Yeah. That yeah. we may have gotten a tackle for a loss. It could have been a fumble that went for six, and everyone's going down to celebrate with the guy that picked up the fumble. I'm sprinting over to the DN. I don't care what everyone else is doing. I'm saying, like, you made this play because this guy needs to know that. And so yeah. everyone always talks about that. Like, why did after that play, my wife, you did, why do you uh, sprint over to 98 after the play? I'm like, because he did exactly what he's supposed to do. And she's like, right. isn't that what he's supposed to do? And I go, no, you don't get it. So, yeah, most definitely. <clears throat> I mean, because my, my time was when uh, we got a uh, young kid of a name, uh, Alex Hedden. He's going to be an outstanding player for us and then in the future. And um, it was, uh, I think it was at Pace when we went out. We went up, uh, we went out of, out of the city of Atlanta and he caught a hitch route. And all year, I'm telling all the wide receivers, when you catch the hitch route, turn outside. Oh, Piedmont. We were at Piedmont. Piedmont. Yeah. Turn outside. Turn outside. I mean, and I'm telling the quarterbacks all year. Put the ball on the hitch route. The ball is on the outside shoulder all the yep. time. So, so the person that's catching the ball can put his body between the defender and the ball. 
And I mean, that first play, it was like, we was like, we was late in the second quarter and we was just like, man, we got to score. We got to score. We tried Mount Belt, we tried so many things. And I was like, man, I'm about to call Smash. Forget it. I'm about to call Smash. And the first time we caught it, man, it was a perfect, a uh, perfect ball, man. And he caught it on the outside shoulder and he spun outside. And like you said, man, when the kid comes to you and be like, so coach, that's why you tell us to spin outside. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's the most rewarding thing. Um, so before we wrap it up here, coach Hughes, this question is going to be for you and, and coach Sims, feel free to hop in too. But we ask this question to every guest that comes on. So I keep telling the joke. Uh, eventually coaches are going to figure it out when they listen to more episodes, but this is, it's a bit of a toughie. So take your time with it. But what is the one thing your program does that no one else does that you do better? Or what's the most unique thing that you do that no one else does uh, as part of your program? Um, I would say, you know, from, from just from a unique standpoint, um, you know, I mean, I, again, I, I really think that, and, and again, this is the position we're in and I'm not saying other people don't do it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that at all, but really the culture, the culture building, um, thing that we, we did when we first came in was like, real, we're, we're like, we're tight with these kids. Um, yeah. and I mean, I mean, on a different level, like, I mean, we've got the, the thought process was, I know people came to me and they go, well, they go, how do you recruit the hallways? You know, that was a big thing. Like in, in some of these interviews is like, you know, how do you recruit the hallways? Like, what do you do? And I said, if you're doing things the right way, the kids are going to recruit the hallways. Yeah. You know, they're going to recruit the hallways for you, you know, and that's not to say that, that, you know, um, and now one unique thing, really unique thing is, is we're, we're, we have two campuses. We have an upper school campus and we have a lower school campus. I work at both campuses. Um, and coach Sims works at the lower school campus. Um, I've got another coach who works at the upper school campus. So we're touching like, you know, we've got our hands in everything as far as with, with like the kids and what they're doing and, and things like that. So it's not to discredit. I don't mean to say like, I, I know other people do a phenomenal job much better than we do, but it was really, really intentional to say, Hey, football is going to be secondary. The development of the relationships we have with these kids is going to be the primary thing, whether, and, and I, I told, I told, you know, the, when I came in and interviewed for the job and, and I said, look, I said, we're going to have kids that are going to quit, you know, and we're still going to see them in the hallway. We're still going to say hi to them. We're still going to support them. We're still going to love them. You know, if that's at the the band recital, if that's at the another sport that they're playing. And so, you know, that was my thing is we wanted to make this something that kids were like, you know, thinking like, why am I not a part of that? You know, yeah. like, why is this something I'm not a part of? And so, you know, and I got kids that come to me today who, who are seniors who were like, you know, um, you know, coach, I wish I'd played this year. I really wish I'd played. And and I says, fine, man, you know, hey, you know, you, you know, and so, but it's it's that next group and that next group. So I think we did a really good job with that, which I know again, that's not crazy unique or anything like that, but I know it was something that when we came in, it was backwards from anything that I had ever been a part of because again, it was always scheme and it was always those type of things. Um, and then it was like, hey, if we can get those relationships, great. But I was like, no, I, the first thing I want to do is dive deeply with these kids and and build these relationships, because if we can do that, you know, it's bigger than football. And so, um, you know, I felt like that's what we did and uh, super proud of that. And we can hang our hats on that. And, you know, um, and I think the success we had this year, we split, we went 500 at the at the upper school level. Our middle school went five and one, which was phenomenal. Uh, yeah. I mean, they had won a game. They had there was one season prior to me coming here of middle school um, and they were getting mercy ruled like first quarter, you know, and, and this year we went five and one. And, and I think honestly, a lot of that was due to the, the, you know, I mean, building those relationships and the kids getting those other kids out, the kids pulling those other kids in the hallways and getting those kids out. So, yeah, you know, that to me was again, not nothing, nothing unique, but I think that was special for, for us just as what we're doing. Um, so that was special to me. Yeah, no coach. You, it, it's not cliche. It's not ridiculous. It is the right thing and the unique thing for you. And that's all that matters. I, I tell people all the time. Um, I, I also love the movie Moneyball. I'm big on it. And he looks at people and he goes, you think it's a problem we have to explain to other people? And we don't. And I always try to take that viewpoint into everything. We don't have to explain why we do things to everyone else. As long as we justify it with us and our players, it doesn't matter what everyone else thinks. Yeah. You know, 
<clears throat> you yeah, guys know there's a hundred coaches in the stands every Friday night that know better than you. It's it's um, unbelievable. It, it was funny. I know you said you 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 met with Coach Sutherland from from Bartram. Yeah, I, I I reached out to him. It was a couple of years okay. ago. Um, and did a Zoom with him. Where oh, yeah. I, was, I mean, I was just so impressed with what he did uh, from a culture standpoint and and just the, all the stuff he had going on within the school. And it's how can you incorporate not just the football players, how can you incorporate the staff? How yeah. can you incorporate, you know, uh, the parents, the, um, you know, all the stakeholders that, that just how can you make this a community? Um, and, you know, and so – uh, I, I know I spent some time talking with him on a Zoom just one day. Probably wouldn't remember who I was, but but he the stuff he told me and the things that he did were phenomenal. Um, and I, I pulled a lot of that stuff that, that we talked about that day. And so, um, you know, uh, that's a big thing for, for me, especially being a head coach is, is you know, I'm able to, you know, offensively, I got an offensive coordinator, got a, got a defensive coordinator. And so I'm able to really spend some time focusing on that. And that's I, I, it's I'm, I'm very appreciative of it. It's vital. And let me tell you, Coach Sutherland will remember you. He doesn't forget anybody. Um, <laughs> just had him on. And, you know, I, I, I'm i the same way. It's so fun to hear him talk and so fun and, and, and listen to him talk about culture. And it's fantastic. But I, I coached against him and played against him my entire career. Never coached with him. Wanted to beat him. I tell him all the time, like, I hate Bartram Trail. I don't like anything about your school because I always wanted to beat you. But, Coach, I always admire you and, and have a lot of respect for you. And uh, and he kind of chuckled about that. Um, I'll tell this story. I didn't tell it on the podcast with him. He was speaking at a clinic. Um, we played them a year before and uh, we played pretty well. There are a couple things that he got me on. And I went when he was speaking X's nose and he has just play up in the clinic. And I went and sat in row one in my oak leaf shirt and pulled out the notebook and started taking notes in the middle of his clinic. And it was kind of a joke, but I was kind of, you know, I, we were all laughing at first. And I kind of looked down before we started saying, hey, coach, do you, do you care whether I'm in here or not? And he's like, oh, Kyle, take all the notes you want, bud. Yeah. And you're like, oh, God, he's going to beat me again, isn't he? Like, he just <laughs> sat there and said, take all the notes you want. Oh, no. So it, he's such a great guy in, in, in a lot of stuff. So that perfect, coach. When when it comes out here in a, a couple of weeks, you can listen to his right before you listen to your own, and it'll be a good deal. Um, perfect. Well, coach, uh, coach is, thank you for coming on tonight. Again, if you have questions for either coach, you can email us anytime at the Podcast at gmail.com. You can tweet us or DM us on Twitter. We're at Bordrill Pod. Uh, we also do Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, everything. So you can see clips of all the shows and all those different mediums. And, uh, you know, so tune in, ask us some questions, interact with us. Tell us we suck. Um, I really don't care. And I mean, me and Matt, not not our guests. You can tell the host we suck. You can make fun of my farmhouse sign. Do whatever, do whatever you want. Uh, but again, uh, coaches, thanks for coming on tonight. We really appreciate having you. Thanks, thanks. Thank you.